So I did my poem on the Negro's complaint written by William Cowper. Um, the poem itself is told in the viewpoint of a slave. Um, so the speaker goes into detail about the trials and tribulations, what it truly means to be, actually be a slave. Um, so to actually understand Cowper's lines, um, it's better if you actually know more of a historical context to see what was actually going on uh, during Cowper's time as he actually wrote the poem. And uh, the article that I did that supported all my uh, analysis on the literary piece was a uh, rethinking empire in India and the Atlantic. Um, William Cowper, John Newton, and the Imperial Origins of the Evangelical Abolitionism. And that's written by Matthew Wyman McCarthy. Um, the article itself is not necessarily about the poem, but it's more about uh, William Cowper's views of the imperialistic reign of Britain and the moral reasons Cowper had um, to stand firm in the anti-slavery movement and uh, how these values appear uh, in a lot of his works, especially in uh, The Negro's Complaint. Um, so yeah, the article kind of gives you a behind-the-scenes look, and uh, it's you can actually see how uh, morbid the poem actually really is. Um, Cowper took part in the uh, imperial reform debates on numerous occasions. Um, so he saw the immorality in the slave trade occurring uh, in the uh, Atlantic, and uh, he also saw the wickedness in the uh, uh, British imperialism that was going on in uh, India. Um, McCarthy makes it known uh, that Cowper was a forerunner in the evangelical shift uh, the empire experienced in the late 18th century. So whether that's doing what Cowper did physically or what he did with his uh, literary work, such as the Negro's Complaint, uh, is up for debate. Um, Cowper said that uh, he believed that the slave trade and uh, imperialism was something all evangelicals thought about. It was a uh, common theme that the, of course, the evangelicals, yeah, all share. Um, although in his reform debates, Cowper directly confronts the government, but in his literary pieces, he never directly uh, confronts and questions the British uh, legitimacy, and he never questions uh, their control. But uh, in his wor uh, literary pieces, if you actually look uh, through your third eye, I guess you could say, uh, it's clear what uh, William Cowper is actually uh, hinting to. Um, again, being in a being an evangelical abolitionist, Cowper also realized it was near impossible to stop the empire by himself, and the only hope he had was to really sit back and hope that something happened, and he just stuck to his writings. Um, the empire was, uh, they were just having too much fun conquering. The pride behind it, they, uh, they were getting money, so there was really no way he could stop it by himself. And, uh, one uh, a common theme in William Cowper's writings that also many other people around his time have uh, shared the same thought. He says uh, one of his main thoughts is if the homeland, like the cent center of it all, experiences all this justice and love, then all the lands that we conquer should experience the same justice and love and not just not just ruin everything that it once was. So, what else? Cowper. So yeah, the uh, I've 
I really like the article by itself. It wasn't necessarily about the poem as it was the historical context, but I think in the Negro's complaint, it's a pretty basic and speaking about literary terms, but if you look at it from a historical side, I think you could actually get more from the uh, poem. So I think that's uh, probably my favorite part about it. Uh, you actually have to know your history to have appreciation for the poem and see really how morbid it is. Um, so yeah. Um,